We hear them mentioned every day in the media. We read their stories in the press and in in-flight magazines. We even make movies about them. But what are entrepreneurs and why are they so important to the regrowth of our economy? According to Bill Schley in his inspirational book, The Unstoppables, the answer is simple. Entrepreneurs will make the jobs, invent the industries, create the new markets, and populate the new companies that will rebuild our economic future. Join us for the next 10 minutes as we share Schley's insights to find out exactly what an entrepreneur has that sets them apart and what you need to have to tap into your entrepreneurial power. I'm an entrepreneur. No, I'm an entrepreneur. Just like the scene in the movie, Kirk Douglas is not the only Spartacus, and many others claim to be him. This is the same for entrepreneurs. There are many who claim to be, but not too many who can truly recognize the characteristics. Schley reports that professors and business experts have already carried out copious research and written much on the subject of entrepreneurship. The problem is that they rarely agree. Entrepreneurs are a difficult bunch to categorize. They differ too much in skill, in risk-taking, and in perseverance. Schley puts it succinctly. The difference between entrepreneurs and everybody else is, the entrepreneurs are simply the ones that step up to the plate. Successful entrepreneurs are the ones that just keep swinging. Asking entrepreneurs themselves, they would not characterize themselves very differently from the ordinary person like you or I. The key difference is action. They did it, and the rest thought about it. And that's good for us. Why? Because if we can teach ourselves how to face up to and overcome inaction and the associated fear of change, we too can be entrepreneurs. As Schley points out, we may or may not fit into somebody else's neat definition of an entrepreneur, but no one can exclude us from participating or succeeding in the adventure. Despite what many of us would think, entrepreneurs are not risk hungry. Yes, At face value, they put their heads above the parapet and operate out of the traditional comfort zone. But that's only because they accept they will need to risk something to satisfy their yearning. No entrepreneur risks their or others' money without calculating the chance of success. Entrepreneurs, and you if you want to join the club, must face up to and conquer anxiety. Another misconception about entrepreneurs, pointed out by Schley, is the belief that they are divergent thinkers. He aligns with Sir Ken Robinson in suggesting such creativity is taught out of us at school and college. The answer is simply that entrepreneurs hold on to childlike imagination. We see a box, they see a racing car or a rocket. Entrepreneurs make the intangible into the tangible. They literally turn mind into matter. They see a problem and don't accept it. They seek out the answers to questions we may have heard children ask. Why not? What if? and they then come up with answers no one else has thought of. But most importantly, entrepreneurs ask the questions and then actually do things to answer them. Everybody else just talks. That's all well and good for business people, you may say, but I'm on my own. Schley again challenges that negative thinking. People think entrepreneurship and they immediately think business. But entrepreneurship is the idea that people can have powerful ideas, own those ideas, and do meaningful things with them. Not just create a job, but to create a life. So what do we need to join this illustrious band? What are the skills for success? Schley suggests we start to develop accelerated proficiency. Accelerated proficiency. As part of his research, Schley spent time at the movies. Yes, believe it or not, the Karate Kid is the key to entrepreneurial progress. You may recall the scene. Left hand, right hand. Wax on, wax off, Daniel-san. Despite being initially frustrated by the activity, what Daniel achieved was muscle memory of the core karate moves, not the full black belt portfolio of kicks and punches, but enough to beat his rival. Not over years of training, but in a short time. The same principle is the essence to entrepreneurship. It's 100 times better to spend two weeks to get minimally functionally qualified, MFQ, and start doing it for real than it is to spend two years studying without any action. Schley calls this principle accelerated proficiency, the art and science of getting people to be minimally functionally qualified in an accelerated time frame so they can get in motion, start doing, and effectively teach themselves rather than talking and observing. 
To succeed with accelerated efficiency, Schley suggests we need to follow a four-step sequence. Get exposed. Uncover the fallacies that create fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and then remove them. Get a snapshot. Visualize the essence of how it progresses from beginning to end, quickly and basically. Get wet. Try it out now. Get in motion. Getting in the motion is where we identify the markets, the needs, the prototypes, and where the doors will open, which we will never see from the confines of our comfort zone. Accelerated proficiency principles always point to the center of any problem, because the center is the place to go all in. Entrepreneurs wake up every day on a quest to keep the center of their brand, their performance, their culture, or the status as the customer's number one choice locked in the crosshairs. That's our focus. Accelerated proficiency relies on our ability to step out of our comfort zone and focus on what is needed. This in turn requires strength of character, a willingness not to give up in the face of challenges and failure. It's what Schley calls emotional mechanics. Emotional mechanics. To an entrepreneur, doing is a commitment, a point of principle. It means starting, not quitting, and ultimately achieving some value that wasn't there before. Schley suggests that doing is the most valuable quantity there is. So why don't we? One word. Fear. Yet if we tame our fear, we can turn it to our advantage. We need to manage our emotions and beat the beast of belittlement. Emotional mechanics enables us to start, do, and succeed regardless of odds or resources. How we handle emotional mechanics is the difference between win and lose. Fear generally falls into one of three categories. Fear of the unknown, fear of failure and loss, and fear of humiliation or social exclusion. Can you see yourself in some or all of those? But to progress beyond the fear barrier, we need to take the calculated risk, and that's at the core of emotional mechanics. As Schley indicates, if we plan to build, create, innovate, experience, achieve, or win at anything, risk is ever present. So how do we minimize risk? Schley gives us four pointers. Get proficient on the basics fast, practice until they're automatic, then use them to your advantage. Eliminate our known disadvantages, the weaknesses we already know we have. Get support for what we can't overcome. Team synergy is a key asset. And steer our fear, transferring it into energy to prevent it from stopping us, distorting our thinking, and jeopardizing the outcomes. Embrace failing. Failing means learning. Failure means adjusting and fixing. Failure means measuring our limits. Failing helps eliminate the obstacles that block our progress. Failure means getting better and stronger. For all these reasons, failure is always temporary, unless you quit. Failure is an integral part of the doing process. It's not supposed to be fun or painless, but if we keep at it, it will train us for success. The unstoppable people of Schley's book accept that they must walk a path lined with problems needing to be solved. Problems are obstacles. Obstacles are temporary failures. Failure poses risk, and risk inspires fear, which, when we handle it intelligently, empowers us to find solutions. Unstoppables accept this as normal. More than that, they know that they're refining their expert intuition with every hurdle they face. They see patterns and solutions that others don't see, often because their unconscious recognizes something familiar. That's why obstacle is really just another word for opportunity. The outcome of mastering emotional mechanics is belief. Ultimately, in an organization of any size, only a culture of belief can sustain and unleash entrepreneurship, initiative, innovation, and joy. Making emotional mechanics work involves just a little bit of mental magic, a few rules of thumb, and repetition in real conditions so that as soon as possible we can function, improve, and enable ourselves or our team to believe. And that's how you too can become an unstoppable force of entrepreneurial success. So, when are you starting? Hi, I'm Rhonda. And this is an exclusive audiobook video recorded for the Audiobook Master Channel. Enjoy your audiobook and have fun learning!
Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you'll get updated on our next upload. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and say your thoughts about the book we just covered. Do you want to listen to a summary or review of a book that we haven't covered in the past? Say it in the comments below or send us a message. Don't forget to check our other uploads. Enjoy listening!